Yep, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I left uh, the place where I live to go to another place and consume a form of media that is, in fact, not a music. Rather, I did a thing where I use my eyes, but also the the ears. The, not, they're not up here, they're down here. Yep, use the ears as well to hear, and uh, again, with the eyes seeing, uh, a series of moving pictures, a.k.a. a film. I know the last time I spoke on this topic, we were, uh, you know, on the subject of something a little weird, the massive three-hour uh, anxiety epic that is Ari Aster's uh, Bo is Afraid. But this time we're talking about something that's uh, a bit more approachable. Uh, that's the new Spider-Man film, Across the Spider-Verse, which is the sequel to the 2018 movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is exciting because apparently the third film, what I imagine is going to be, you know, kind of the uh, uh, bow that ties up the narrative of these films, the next one, Beyond the Spider-Verse, is going to be dropping next year. God, I'm excited to see that movie. As soon as the film was over, I was like, man, the, the world better not end before the, the last freaking one comes out. Because dang it, it is that good. It's that intense. It blew me away that much. It had me on the edge of my seat uh, almost the entire time. Let's get into it. Now look, I'll preface this spiel by saying generally, I'm not really into comic book movies. I mean, of course, you know, I like a Batman here and there. Uh, Tom Holland, I thought, was a pretty good Spider-Man in, in the, you know, the, the live-action uh, film series. I dig on some X-Men. I have peeped a Marvel movie or two, but, you know, these days, if you ask me, like, Anthony, what do you think uh, about what's going on in the MCU? I don't freaking know. I don't got no idea. I don't care. They could just be all pooping and peeing and farting for two hours and playing with each other's pee and poop and farts, and I, I would have no idea. I do know one thing for sure, though. That That's not what's happening in this Spider-Man movie. Movie that yeah that's not what's happening here as I said uh, this is the sequel to the 2018 film into the spider-verse which uh, the moment I saw the trailer for this movie I, I, I knew that I kind of had to see it because I mean if we could show at least you know a few stills or visuals or something like I, I just found the the art style of this film uh, to be really visually pleasing and beautiful and, and just you know kind of uh, very stimulating for an animated comic book movie. And for sure, Into the Spider-Verse and all the films in this series uh, were not the first animated comic book film or uh, show to exist, and they won't be the last, but uh, I just thought that uh, uh, what I was seeing and what I experienced with this movie uh, was like just kind of living in and being fully immersed in a living and breathing comic. Whether it be, you know, again, other animated stuff or live action stuff, you know, trying to live out the series of a comic or a manga or a visual novel, whatever it be. Uh, I, I just feel like this film uh, is one of the best to do it best, if not the best, in terms of like, you know, really kind of uh, bridging that gap between the comic book world and reality. Because obviously everything you're seeing has so much flair, it's so stylized, it's so hyper colorful and uh, vivid and creative. But the way that the characters move and act, the way they're written, the way they carry themselves, uh, it just reads like real life. I feel like everything I'm seeing uh, is so material, like I could just reach out and touch it, I could smell it, I could taste it. Watching comic book movies like uh, Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse uh, doesn't just feel like I am uh, experiencing a uh, illustrated medium on a page or even on a screen. I just feel like I'm uh, looking at a window into another world. So again, when I originally saw the art style of uh, the first film, I was dying to see it because it just looked beautiful and looked interesting. I also thought that uh, however they would handle the story, uh, would be of interest for me because of all of the controversy and hubbub that was generated uh, years prior over the idea of, you know, there being a new Spider-Man franchise and introducing, uh, you know, a, a black Spider-Man in the process of doing that. Uh, guys like Donald Glover were sort of like, you know, talked about uh, around those discussions. He has a very funny and entertaining cameo in this new movie over here that uh, I thought was a great inclusion. There are also some other parts of 
of the movie where you know you kind of see these uh, characters living in like a, a real life you know a live action uh, type situation or interacting with characters uh, that are live action in some way shape or form which just adds to the hyper realism but yeah I just thought there was a lot of stunning and beautiful visual artistry that went into uh, the first film even with it you know again comic book movie and uh, with a lot of the sections and scenes of the movie uh, being very silly and lighthearted. While the first film did introduce uh, you know the idea of this multi-dimensional spider-verse where you have you know different spider-man characters living out their separate spider-man lives which is a cool little sci-fi concept and angle and I thought all of that just played out really well really tastefully and along the way every scene every single thing visually was just uh, was just stunning and uh, breathtaking the more that you look at it now with that being said uh, because I was so impressed with the first film I went into the second one with super 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 high expectations and honestly I would say that those expectations were met and exceeded even with there being a switch in directors uh, this time around for the new film there were some additional writers added into the mix as well and uh, from everything that I could see experiencing the film like not a beat was skipped we're just thrown right back into the spider-verse picking pretty much where we left off and I think if this film does anything well it's really kind of expanding uh, the breadth and the personality of the characters and the world that we were first introduced to in the original movie. Okay, there are going to be some light spoilers in this video in kind of going over, uh, you know, some major plot points, so you know, be, be warned. warned. This new movie, a lot like the first one, kind of kicks off with an introduction. We are uh, given essentially the origin story of Spider-Gwen. Many of these plot points are rushed through. They're said very matter-of-factly because she's kind of telling her life story in, uh, you know, a very plain and straightforward way, but I uh, implore everybody watching this to uh, really pay attention to everything because this movie works in crazy amounts of layers and callbacks because of all of the different, you know, dimensions and universes and Spider-Man uh, characters overlapping uh, with each other. So there are moments here that if you're not paying attention, you'll miss how her origin story uh, sort of impacts a lot of what happens later in the movie. So again, like, you know, be on top of everything flying by you at a million miles a minute here. Of course, everything we see in this Gwen introduction, just like with the first movie, is visually stunning, breathtaking, gorgeous. Once we get this set up through, we pretty much go back to Miles Morales to see essentially what his life has been like uh, since becoming Spider-Man, since everything we saw in the first movie. We learn more about him, we learn more about him coming into his own as a superhero, we learn more about his family, uh, his regular life obligations that he's also trying to balance while being a superhero. Uh, this movie, I think, does an even better job of making him seem like, you know, not just uh, like a well-written character, but like a real person who you can truly relate to. And once we're off and running with this and we have a whiff of what Miles' current state is, then the Spider-Verse and pretty much everything happening with the plot pretty much causes Gwen and Miles to collide again. That's when the movie really kind of expands upon you know, it's multiverse concept that the first movie introduced us to, and it does it really well, really creatively, and in an entertaining fashion as well. I think a lot of haters and naysayers who were not into the first movie or into, you know, the concept or the idea of a black Spider-Man character uh, kind of saw the multiverse concept as, you know, just like a cheap way to uh, just basically make the series more inclusive or, you know, get like uh, some diversity bucks in their pocket or whatever. But when you actually look at the richness and the depth of the sci-fi world that the writers in this film are trying to create on this movie, you can really tell, no, they actually care about this idea and care about this concept and are interested in toying with it in the most absurd and just out there way possible, really kind of bordering on something along the lines of everything, everywhere, all at once. Which, if you haven't seen that movie with its uh, very unique exploration of things like multiverses and alternate dimensions, I, I recommend that you do because uh, there are some really cool parallels 
uh, between these two films. And if you, you know, uh, like this one, I think you'll like that one as well. Both play with the idea very interestingly that you can have these different dimensions impacting each other in uh, a super negative way, in a way that's high stakes, in a way that causes you to sort of have a lot of introspection, to think about your own life and the way that's going, where things are leading you. Uh, but also they throw in a lot of, you know, kind of absurd ideas as well, because in an alternate Spider-Man universe, you can have a cowboy Spider-Man with a, you know, a horse that also has a mask and, you know, just like fucking shooting webs and shit. You could have a UK punk rock Spider-Man. Uh, you could have a, a, a big husky thick Spider-Man. <laughs> Because I have seen some people reacting negatively to uh, this movie, uh, pointing at things like, oh, you, you have a, a pregnant Spider-Man who's riding a motorcycle in this movie? That's ridiculous. That's preposterous. But if you look at the actual movie, that character is not even the weirdest Spider-Man you see on the screen. There are loads of insane Spider-Man characters that make absolutely no sense whatsoever, and that's kind of the point. You know, they're, they're trying to uh, show you with an amazing amount of specificity and creatively uh, just how diverse the multiverse can be in terms of these uh, various Spider-Man characters uh, just kind of leading different lives and coming from different walks of life. And the versions of New York that they come from are all wildly different as well. And uh, again, the writers, the animators play with this idea uh, in a really interesting way. Now, with that being said, uh, things start to coalesce with the storyline when the idea is introduced uh, that all these Spider-Man characters, uh, despite the fact that they are so different in a variety of different ways, uh, within their lives, within their storylines, as it were, in their various multiverses, uh, they're all kind of subject to a series of uh, very tragic core experiences. And again, despite them being very different in terms of just, you know, visual and personality, they're all kind of being subject to mostly the same stuff to kind of make them, uh, you know, the superheroes and the characters that they currently are. Okay, again, warning, I'm going to talk about another big spoiler here, uh, but I'm not going to get too deep into it to the point where it ruins the movie or anything like that. But it's at this point that we learn that Miles Morales is like, you know, an anomaly in this whole Spider-Verse. We, we, we sort of learn that he wasn't supposed to be a Spider-Man and the spider that bit him did so kind of as a fluke. At least that's what the film tells us because there's a lot of things about uh, the Spider-Verse that isn't quite making sense and not in a way where it, you know, kind of like uh, kneecaps the film or makes it worse or makes it kind of difficult to watch. Uh, there are moments where purposefully the writers want you to kind of question the validity of what you're being told in terms of the validity of the Spider-Verse, what can and cannot be done in the Spider-Verse, because Miles Morales himself is kind of questioning uh, the validity of all of this too, because he's essentially being told by other characters, by the storyline, by the world surrounding him, that, you know, this is going to happen, and that's got to happen, and this is your destiny. All of this is pretty much foretold, and you continuing to do what you want to do, it's just kind of messing everything up, and you can't do that, you can't do this. I bring this up and I spoil this to say that the film, in a lot of ways, ends up becoming a couple different things. You have a, a really elaborate version of the trolley problem here because, you know, you have Miles wanting to sort of do what he wants to do and make the changes he wants to make for his own well-being and his loved ones, while simultaneously uh, there is the threat of there being like, you know, multiple lives and maybe multiple dimensions lost as a result of him just kind of being like, fuck it, I'm just gonna like do me. On top of that, the film also becomes a meta commentary on Miles Morales, the character, and the way, you know, a black Spider-Man was received conceptually by audiences because he wasn't supposed to be and he's the anomaly, he's the original anomaly. Also in toying with this multi-dimensional concept, uh, the writers decided to introduce into this film as kind of a main villain of uh, the spot, which again, for this whole Spider-Verse thing, I think is a great villain choice and idea. I don't want to spoil too much more of the plot, so I'll say this and maybe round things up a little bit by um, uh, once again stating the visual art style of the film, again, is consistent and in this new one, amazing. There are actually some parts where I think they uh, went the distance and pushed past uh, what they were able to accomplish with the last film. Like there's one scene that I thought was actually kind of visually mind-blowing 
where Gwen is talking to her father and, um, you know, in the background, you sort of see the place that they're in uh, in a very surreal way, getting like really melty, like it's all watercolors or something. And the further they get into this very emotional conversation, the more the world behind them just kind of like, you know, becomes drippy and unrealistic and, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of uh, very tasty eye candy throughout the film just like that. It just sort of depends on like, you know, what scene you're watching, what the emotional tone of a certain scene is, what the vibe is, what's going on plot wise. You've really just got to catch it in the moment that it happens. And, uh, you know, again, that scene that I just mentioned is, is one of many that uh, took me by surprise and uh, uh, was just, uh, again, you know, something that left a mark on me. So yeah, again, with the art style, I think they went above and beyond. The movie also leaves us on a big, gigantic, fat, just massive, crushing cliffhanger. Uh, actually, one of the biggest cliffhangers I, I've seen in a mainstream movie in a long time. But it's a pretty gratifying one because there's some, some huge revelations that happen right at the end of this film. Ones that, again, I don't want to spoil because I think it'll ruin things uh, too much. Even though some of what occurred I did see happening, the characters are so well written, the pacing of the film is so good, the visuals are so stunning that even when uh, it was happening, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The predictability of it doesn't really matter because the characters are so well put together uh, that I was just that emotionally invested in what was going on as it was happening. So yeah, plot essentially leaves us uh, with a big fat question mark. Uh, the movie is over two hours long, so it's a pretty dense watch as well well for a comic book movie, uh, especially one that is so visually overstimulating. And it's so much to take in and see all at once. It's just too much to process, but that kind of makes me want to see the movie again and again and again. So yeah, art style, visually stunning, plot, again, edge of my seat, uh, characters well written, um, you know, the reintroduction of like the original Peter Parker and Miles' family and so on and so forth, that goes well. The tone of the movie was great throughout. It had amazing visual gags, uh, very snappy dialogue and writing, just a great balance of drama and action and comedy. And even through that, sort of making some meta commentary on the movie itself and, uh, you know, the Spider-Man series, as there's a funny part where one of the Spider-Man characters is, uh, you know, quite serious and they uh, use that as uh, kind of a way to dig at the idea. Does Spider-Man have to be silly? Does Spider-Man have to be funny? You know, I feel like it's kind of a requirement that Spider-Man uh, be quippy and sort of tongue in cheek all the time. So again, there are a lot of very witty parts of the film uh, that seem like a dissection of the idea of Spider-Man Spider-Man itself. So if you're a fan who's just like really deep into Spider-Man lore, seeing this movie go into that and pull that apart and, uh, you know, in, in a way uh, make a satire and even a very smart critique of that um, in, in the way that it does, I, I think should be very entertaining. You know, again, for anybody who's a hardcore fan. There were some parts of the movie, I will say, where I was like sitting in the chair, fighting back tears, like they're, they're genuinely parts that fucked me up. I guess I just wanna say I highly recommend it. I think it's a really good movie. And again, came into this thing with super high expectations given how great the first film was. Not generally a comic book movie addict, but uh, you know, this, this series, I make an exception for. Very much looking forward to uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse when that comes out. And uh, yeah, fire, awesome, great film. Loved it. Super entertaining, stimulating, funny, smart, uh, emotionally impactful too. Very nice musical inclusions from Metro Boomin uh, throughout the movie as well that were incorporated tastefully. And I think that's everything that I wanna say about this right now. If you guys have seen the movie, let me know what you thought about it in the comments or are you crazy about it? Did it blow you away? Did it do anything for you? Did you think it was mid? Let me know. Cool? Uh, cool. Mwah. You're the best. Uh, Anthony Fantano over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, sp sp I already said my name, Spider-Man, <laughs> forever.